Hi, in this video I'm going to take a look at the best free synth that's currently available. And it's called Vital. So let's go! Now I may be a bit late to the party because this synth has been out for a while. But just in case any of you have missed this initially as well, I wanted to mention it because it's really awesome. So you may be aware of a synth called Serum, which is a very popular wavetable synth and is used in a lot of electronic music, EDM, but it can also be used very well in any genre really. And this is the Serum website. And as you can see, it costs $189, which is a fair price for what you get. It has won lots of awards. And like I said, it's really quite popular. However, since a few years, the Vital Synth has been released and that's really giving Serum a run for its money. The sound quality is arguably at least as well as Serum's and many people actually prefer the user interface and the programmability of the Vital Synth. So let's have a look at where you can get it. So this is the Vital website, a spectral warping wavetable synth. And if you click on get vital, you see that there's a number of ways that you can get vital. One of them is free. They have a plus pack with some more presets and they have a pro pack with a lot of presets and a lot of wavetables, additional skins, support, and they have a subscription based model, of course, like pretty much any software right now. And that gives you first access to new features. But really the main differences between the free basic version and the top level pro version, which only costs $80 by the way, so that's quite a moderate price as well. But the main differences are the number of presets and wavetables. So sound quality is exactly the same. Options that you have in the plugin are exactly the same. You just have more presets and more sounds. However, the basic one will keep you busy for years with sound design if you're so inclined. And there's also lots of very affordable preset banks available, as well as a lot of free presets for Vital. Because many people are actually switching over from Serum to Vital because they like it better. And hey, it's free, so what's not to like? Now, I'm not a very experienced sound designer myself, but since it's so easy with this synth, let's jump into Cubase and make it work for us. Okay, so this is Cubase with one instrument track. And if I open up Vital, this is the user interface, which seems like very busy and complex, but don't despair. It is actually quite simple to get the basics down. Now, currently I have a preset selected called Abbey Sun. So let's listen to it. Yeah, so this is quite a complex sound, but as you can see on top here, we have the preset selector. And over here we have all the presets that come with the initial synth. And in this case I have all the default presets that come with the basic version. And I installed an additional pack from In The Mix, which I think was 15 euros or so. And well worth it by the way. But if you don't want to buy any packs, you can just go for the basics. Now let's reset the synth to default. You can go over here to initialize preset. And we're on the main voice tab of the synth here. It has a number of other tabs, but let's first have a look at this voice tab. Because on this tab or page, you can see that there are three oscillators that you can use to generate sounds for this synth. And the initial wave shape in oscillator one is a sawtooth. And if I now push a key, you can see that it plays. Quite an obnoxious sound if you don't do anything to it. Now, fortunately, there are also a lot of other wave shapes and you can basically click over here to choose another wavetable. Now if you choose the basic shapes wavetable, you can see that we now get a default sine wave. But since this is a wavetable synth, there's actually multiple wave shapes within the basic shapes table. You can have a look at that when you push the 2D control here because now it changes into a 3D view. And over here you can see that with this slider, you can actually select another wave shape from whichever wavetable you have loaded. Yeah, for example, this one, if I go back to 2D, you can see that it's a square wave basically. Now let's go back and initialize the preset again from scratch. So we're on the init wavetable, which only has the sawtooth in it, as you can see over here. Now you can also see that this oscillator is going to filter one, which is down here. And if I enable this, I can filter the sound a bit so that it sounds a bit less obnoxious. Yeah, sounds way better. Yeah, so the high end is filtered out a bit. Now, apart from that, in oscillator one, you can set the level, you can set the pan position, and you can also bring it down in pitch if you want to. If I drag it down, you can see that it goes down in cents. However, if I push shift, it goes down in whole octaves at once or up. Let's stay at zero here. Now the unison control over here determines how many voices 
are in this oscillator and how much they are detuned compared to each other. So for example, if I set it to six voices, you can hear that the sound is much more complex already and the detuning is a bit much. So let's take that down. And yeah, this is starting to go into the direction of a synth sound. Now, a very big part of a synth is also the envelope, which is to the right here. And in this diagram, you can basically see how the volume of the sound changes when you push the key on your keyboard. So this sound immediately goes to full volume, then it stays at full volume. And then when I release the key, which is from this moment on, it quickly descends to zero. And with the controls over here, you can basically change that behavior. So for example, if you push up the delay, you can see that there is actually some time between the moment that you push the key and when the sound starts, which I don't think is very useful. But the next one is quite useful because this means that when you push the key, the sound gradually swells to its maximum level. Now the hold determines how long the sound stays at this level. For example, if the other parameters were like this, you could make it stay at this level before it decreases in volume. Let's set that to zero and go back to the original shape, which was something like this. Because next up is the decay, and that basically determines how long it takes before the sound reaches its final level as long as you keep the key pressed. And that works in conjunction with the sustain because the sustain indicates at which level the sound finishes as long as you keep the key pressed. So basically the decay is from this point to this point, it's a time and the sustain is a certain level, which is the volume level of this point now. So again, if I push a keyboard. So it kept at this level until I released the key because then you can see that it quickly decreased in volume, which is this part of the curve. And that's the release, which you can also influence like this. So in this way, you can really shape the behavior of the sound when you press the key and when you release the key. Now another nice option is that you can have a second oscillator and let's keep that at the same wave shape. But let's actually bring this down an octave and let's also send this to the same filter. But let's decrease it in level a bit. Now I just showed you that you can influence the volume curve with these attack, decay, sustain, release controls, but you can also just drag this and let's make it a bit of a more plucky sound. So let's make it something like this. Let me extend it a little bit more. Now to color the sound even more, you could also add a third oscillator or you can even add some white noise. That's a bit much. Now another very nice thing is that you can also use these envelopes to control any other parameter in the synth. For example, you just saw me add a filter here and set the cutoff frequency to a certain value, but you can also let that cutoff frequency be determined by this envelope shape. And to set that in Vital is very easy because you can just click here on this envelope and then you can see that you can drag it to everything that's colored green at the moment. But I want to drag it over here. I want to influence the cutoff frequency of this filter. Let's listen and have a look at what's happening with the cutoff frequency now. Yeah, if I start a bit lower, you can basically see that cutoff frequency follows the envelope as soon as I push a key. It starts at its original level, then the frequency goes up, and then it quickly goes down again in the same way that the volume of the sound goes down after it has reached its maximum level. Now for the next part that I want to demo, I want to make it a bit more of a sustained sound again. Because what you can also do instead of modulating the cutoff frequency by the envelope one here, is that you can also modulate that cutoff frequency by means of a low frequency oscillator. And that's basically an oscillator which is not pitch dependent and which oscillates according to this wave shape with the frequency as set over here. So right now it oscillates every quarter note. And let's now modulate the filter cutoff frequency with LFO1 instead of with envelope one. So I can say remove this modulation and I can again drag LFO1 over here. And if I now push a key, you will see how the filter gets modulated by LFO1. And it's now a triangle shape, but again, 
you can have lots of other modulation shapes that you can use to, to drive this LFO1. Now I just showed you envelope one and LFO one, but there's many other envelopes. And as soon as you've used three, I think there's two additional ones that will appear. And there's also many LFOs that you can use to modulate any parameter in the synth really. Now, if by now you like this video or found it useful, please give it a thumbs up for the algorithm. It really helps. Subscribe to the channel. And if you want to know when I publish another video, you can push the little bell icon so you get a notification. And for even more support of the channel, you can now use the thanks button below or use any of my affiliate links in the description. So if you intend to buy anything on Amazon, Toman or Sweetwater, please use my affiliate links. Well, let's get back to Vital. Now on the next tab, you have lots of effects that you can enable on this sound. For example, let's turn on the chorus. And maybe add some reverb or a delay maybe. You can change the order of these effects by just dragging and dropping them on the left side. And as you can tell, there are quite a lot of effects here that can really make a difference to your sound. Now the matrix sounds complicated, but it really isn't. It basically gives an overview of all your modulation sources and destinations that you've set up. And right now it's easy because I only have one modulation setup. I have a modulation going from LFO1, this one to the cutoff frequency of filter one. Now then there's also an advanced tab in which you can do a lot more advanced settings, for example, the oversampling to make the sound quality even higher, but which costs more CPU performance, of course. Now, all in all, I think this is a great synth to get you started in sound design because it's so easy to operate and the feedback that it gives is very visual. And what I've just shown you, I've only scratched the surface of sound design really, and there's much, much more to learn. And I'll provide links to some videos in the description if you want to dive in deeper and want to learn more about Vital, how to program it and how to use it. Now, if you're into free sounds on your DAW, I have another great plugin tip for you, which is a free orchestra plugin. And I'll show you that in this video. Have a look, enjoy, and see you soon.